Hey guys, it's Tom Boggs. Welcome to MST.TV and I'm delivering to you guys my Mermail deck profile slash combos for post eternity code. Now, the main deck is more or less going to be the same because you're really just shoving in three copies of Deep Sea Aria. And aside from that, I think most people's build would be just mostly the same, 99% the same, maybe give or take three cards. I think the focus is here more on the extra deck. And yes, I am using proxies because here in North America, we won't be getting access with uh, Eternity Code until much later on in June. So bear with me guys. If you guys want these proxies, they are available on my Discord. So go to my Discord, you guys can print them out yourselves if you wanna test with, I guess, physical copies of certain cards. Anyways, back into what I was talking about. Most decks of the Mermail uh, can deviate their play style depending on what's in the extra deck. And I think the extra deck here is probably the most key. I think you wanna maximize uh, the, your combos based off of the least amount of resources and the play styles can differ. You can focus more on maybe hand looping your opponent down to the ground where they have nothing left in their hand. That's an option, but it does require you to commit more stuff into your extra deck, perhaps taking out several options. Perhaps you wanna play a negate base play style where you want to synchro into say stuff like Borload Savage Dragon. You wanna go into the Omegas. You wanna go into the big plays. Then that's a different variant altogether. You'll still rip cards because Mulan Glacier is naturally part of the deck or you can focus more on a link centric build where you just start spamming the board non-stop. This is kind of a hybrid in between and you know what, let's just jump into this one. So make sure you guys hit that thumbs up button, hit subscribe, ding notification bell if you wanna stay up to date. I will be demonstrating two combos that's possible with this extra deck package and I'll explain the steps as we go. The deck will be rather quick and yeah, and I'll even do one test hand with you guys. All right, so let's do this. Okay, starting off the build, we have Abyss Megalo. You can play two copies or three copies. You can play two copies, make sure you don't run a super rare because it will always be in your hand paired up with the other one. It's awful when you open multiples. But on the other hand, you always want to discard outlet in a mermail deck, so that's why you can do so. But you can cut it to two because you have so many water-based discard outlets uh, that you will always be able to proc off a lot of your Atlantean cards. And this will also search your Mik Mikazuchi or whatever it's called, the, the spell negator. Then we have Abyss Tooth. This is the key one here that you always want because it is easier to actually put onto the field and you're not really caring about the stats too much and it also fetches you an Abyss Pike along the way. Most of these cards are there to proc off the Atlantean. Seems like although these, these archetypes hate each other, there's te technically the most synergized archetype combination. So anyways, aside from that, yeah, Abyss Tooth, so you can search your gun days, you can search your Abyss Pikes. And speaking of Pike, use your Pike, it searches your gun days and use your gun day. Typically, uh, Abyss Pike isn't an ideal normal summon unless you already have a Dragoons in the graveyard and you have a Prince, but this is also your Monster Reborn that you can dump into the graveyard. Okay, now onto the Sea Serpent lineups. We play three Divas because it summons out your Atlantean Prince. Something to note about Diva is that if you have a heavy infantry in your hand, just remember that you can technically synchro into Herald of the Arc Light. Uh, but before you synchro into Herald of the Arc Light, like you don't want to get hit by a Nibiru. You need some form of negation before you get there. It is an option that you summon that out, and then you normal summon out the Prince that was already in your hand. Synchro the two off, and then go with, with the Neptibus from there. So that's an option if you don't want to get hit by something like Nibiru. And if you want to fetch out a Tuna, you can go into uh, Lapis Dragon through that current play. So that's an option you have, and it does cause your opponent to banish some cards as well. Uh, but I'm not playing that card because I'm focused more on a balance between ripping cards out and negation, because I think that's probably the stronger lineup. Then we have Triple Neptibus Prince. Uh, this is your key opener. If you have this card, you have some level of play just by having this card. And remember, like, cost to send cards into the graveyard, send an Atlantean monster to the graveyard to add another Atlantean, which nets you two cards back into your hand simply by summoning out this card. This card's insane, uh, but it's nothing new. And of course, I play one copy of Dragoons because that's all you need. I'm just kidding. If you're, if you're playing one Dragoons, you're an idiot because uh, this is the best card in the entire deck. It was limited for a reason because it's not once per turn on the search and you can just dump all, all of them into the graveyard. It's also level four and if it's sent to the graveyard as exceeds material, it still counts as triggering its effect. So because it was still sent by a water monster cost, that's why this card is so lovely. It's busted. And uh, next we play double infantry. 
this card's useful. Most things are face up anyways these days, most face down cards. Uh, remember, okay, ruling wise, these things pop the target. That target means that if it's face up, it goes face down, it doesn't pop it anymore. And same goes for Marksman. I play one copy of Marksman for that particular reason. In the old school Yu-Gi-Oh, Marksman was probably the better one because popping face down mattered a lot more. People perhaps had like battle-based traps. But nowadays, like even a floodgate, you hit them with a Marksman like chain. Okay, well now you need heavy infantry. And it seems like you can just bait out the thing and then use heavy infantry anyway. So it's not too bad. Remember, these cards can be sent to the graveyard uh, by the effect of, say, um, Neptibus. So that's why you're not really that afraid of floodgates as much, except for like Mystic Mine. That, that, that one's still a problem. But yeah, that's the infantries and the marksmen. Into some less Sea Serpent ish monsters, uh, I guess we have one Aqua Spirit. If you're not playing this card, that's fine. You should be probably playing an instant fusion instead. I just that I don't have space in the extra deck. So if you can find space in your extra deck and you're you're comfortable with your build, do whatever you want. These are just options for you guys to play. But some of the more mandatory cards, Fishborg Launcher, you have to play it. This one of your extra tuners. Uh, Jet Synchron is another of your tuners. This can also help you manipulate your graveyard by putting one card into the graveyard. Uh, sometimes it does occur where you have too many cards if you synchro off. And of course, Lapis Dragon, because when you uh, add this card to your hand uh, from your deck, you get to summon it out. So it's really easy. And remember, drawing for turn also procs this card. So you can just reveal and summon it during your draw phase. So it does offer you a little bit of versatility. It is a tuner at level five. You can synchro into a nine. That's what this deck is all about. But um, that's one of the options. Uh, just remember, oh, ruling wise, another thing to note, because I've, I've seen people try to misplay with this card. This card can only go into water uh, monsters. So you can't go into formula synchro with this. Next up, we need to break some boards. Okay, this is more of a meta tech, I would say, but I guess people are already doing this. You have to, I would highly recommend running Gamma Seals. Like, Gamma Seals is just really essential, especially when you're playing against, say, uh, uh, I guess, upcoming, I guess we have Mech Knight, uh, Orcus, and they set up their board ridiculously fast, and they always equip themselves with a Dengirzu, and Dengirzu has the Buster uh, Dragon Sword equipped so that you can't even access your extra deck. So this is one quick way of actually getting rid of that card so that you're not locked into just your main deck. And it is very important because Dengirzu will protect it from being popped from your Atlanteans. So that creates a huge limitation. So make sure that you're side decking correctly to kind of negate these things that would shut you out. Aside from that, the deck can itself sufficiently run through the main deck as well. And of course, last but not least, we have Mulan Glacia. Mulan Glacia is one of the most annoying cards. Simply by ripping two cards out of your opponent's hand, uh, I think you can gain some level of control over your opponent at the very least, and it simplifies the game state right from the get-go. And since you're just net plusing a lot of these cards for free, they're playing at a pretty big disadvantage. And if you can set up two negates after a Mulan Glacia, game's 90% over, I would say. But be very careful, not all decks lose to hand looping, which is why I'm not opting to go for like a five card hand loop because if you try to do that against an Eldritch deck, they're not gonna care so much because you're discarding them and you're putting them into the graveyard most of the time. That's a problem because they proc during the end phase, you just sped up their deck. So not in all cases where hand ripping is uh, an ideal situation. It's like when you can play a bunch of Banish versus a Thunder Dragon deck, they'd be like, thanks for the free cards, buddy. And that's the trade-off that we have to be aware of. And uh, if you hit an Orcus deck with this, how would you actually feel about it? Because now it seems like they get free procs. They don't have to do their things in their combo to get that set up because you did it for them. So that's the, the harsh part. Now onto the spell lineup. Here's some proxies. Deep Sea Aria helps you fetch triple of it because like, sure, you need to banish a water monster from your graveyard, but if you look at the entire main deck lineup, it's focused on throwing cards into the grave, so you should have no problems accessing this card or activating this card, and it can be activated once per turn. So you can always get your Dragoons in your hand, so you can always create some sort of chain block for you. I play one copy of one for one, just gonna throw something into the graveyard and get the Prince out onto the field, or Jet Synchron, depending on what I need. Uh, triple cop of the grave, because we don't want to eat an Ash Blossom. Yes, the Diva is one of the key weaknesses throughout the entire play. So there's that. Um, 
Double Pot of Avarice. I love seeing this card. If you have like one copy of Neptibis, this card's already live because the entire combo you go through, you just dump everything into the graveyard by the time you're done because you can set up Moulin Glacia. That means you can always set up Pot of Avarice at the same time. So in other words, you have Pot of Greed in your deck and you do burn through your extract pretty quickly. So having this, being able to shuffle back a lot of the cards and drawing two, sometimes even like resets your whole combo and you have the combo piece right in your hand from the get go. And our last spell would be Abyss Scale of the Mizuchi. Mizuchi here can block stuff like Dark Ruler no more. Highly recommended. And you can even block uh, Super Poly. So that's kind of nice because this is not uh, an activated effect to respond to it. It's just during the resolution, the thing gets negated. So that's, uh, that's not even a response. And finally, this is one card that I'm not the only person running this one copy of Abyss Sphere. It just makes it so that you can actually rip an additional card out of your opponent's hand and utilize the Desert Locus a bit more appropriately. Um, but it is a bit of a brick, so you can cut this if you don't want to play it and you just have to alter your extra deck accordingly. Uh, it's just mainly that you just give me a free discard sometimes and sometimes it can also um, just chump block. People just don't expect it or maybe you can just try to push for game because you can summon in attack position as well. Note that this card does not let you activate spell cards once you have it face up, but it does destroy itself eventually. Okay, for the extra deck lineup, before I get started, I want to give a shout out to Abyss, Shire, Yu-Gi-Oh! If you want to see additional variants on the combos for Mermail, highly recommend checking out her channel. She does a really good job of doing all sorts of combos and uh, everyone's package is a little bit different and this one did have some influence by her thanks to the abyss sphere but uh, you don't have to run this sphere if you don't want to it's just for an additional hand rip that is rather safe i would say anyways let's start off with the extra deck here we have totally awesome bahamut shark abyss dweller i think this should be self-explanatory this is just for the format because it's pretty grave centric and you want to turn off stuff like eldritch and uh I guess every deck really and yeah, that's the default. That's all of the XCs that I run here You could also use a 101 because 101 is actually uh, another possibility. Okay for our water base link twos uh, We have clipper bags coral anemone and miss Starbore, and we have abyss uh, Alacia so you might be wondering why aren't you running area? It's just because I don't have space. Otherwise, I could cut the other text that I have in here for her. And she's a little bit easier to make than Miss Starboy. If you were to replace one, it'd be Miss Starboy getting cut out. But Miss Starboy, if you get negated, you at least still get to summon out. And this one boosts all the dudes attack by 500, which is quite significant. If you have five monsters, it's like an additional monster almost. I clifford backs and summon out your tuners, including D.Va, your... Uh, Fishborg Launcher, uh, you can summon out, I guess, uh, Jet Synchron as well. Those are your options. And Coral Anemone. This is when you start off with a water only combo and you can still rip your opponent's hand apart, like three cards and still establish two negates against them, which is usually enough. You can rip one more card if you really tried. And I think that should be enough to kill your opponent, but it does take an additional turn unless you have the proper extenders. So that's the basic water lineup that you should try. This is just nice to have because if you have an extender and you have the Mizuchi in hand, you can just equip it right here. So you get additional spell-based negation and it can block stuff like one uh, well, of the big problems like Dark Moon or more Lightning Storm, all that junk. For my package variants, I'm running Appaloosa, Link Cross, and if I'm running Appaloosa, I'm obviously running the uh, Ahashima. And uh, this card is really good for the one card Diva setup. It is susceptible to Nibiru, I'm not gonna lie to you. Link Cross gives me quicker access to Trishula, so that's why I'm running it, and it just makes your opponent kind of like iffy. They're like, oh, how are you gonna build a decent board? Well, if I set up your graveyard and then I trish your graveyard, then I'm not feeling too bad altogether. It's actually pretty good. I feel pretty good now. You want to get rid of those tokens. That's why I'm focusing more on my synchro package. At least a synchro package that can handle most cases. And you need big beat six. You need non-targeting removal. You need some form of negation. You need some sort of disruption. So whatever that I have as the remaining card, I think is decent enough, but you can change the package to your own liking. Like Link Ross is not mandatory at all. You can definitely cut it out. Okay, for the synchros, here's the fun part. I'm playing one formula Synchron because why not? Formula Synchron gives you the additional draw and on top of the additional draw, you can also Synchro with that and a seven to go into your uh, Crocodragon. Dragon. So there's that. So that's one of my formula, that's one of my um, Synchro Tuners. My other Synchro Tuner is Desert Locust because I want to rip cards out of my opponent's hand. This is 
only use if I leave the, of course, um, if I only leave the uh, Krishna Clifford Brax onto the field and you just free link it, uh, free synchro it into it. Okay, so those would be the form of the, uh, the synchro tuners. Now for the non-synchro tuners, of course, we have to run a copy of Dragite because you might be locked into water and you need water-based negation. You can still negate, you know, lightning storms with this card. And we have one Trish and one Croco Dragon. Croco Dragon is a form of disruption because it can pop card and proc off your other water monster. Trish is good too. Once you throw stuff into the graveyard, Trishing them is probably the next best thing because you rip a card out of their hand and you get rid of graveyard synergy. And that's why it's pretty nice. And sometimes if you have a formula synchron on the field and you have a three and a four, you get to Trish them during their turn. And that's probably one of the better feelings when you have a disruption that is named Trishula the Ice Barrier Dragon. Okay, enough of me talking. Why not just demonstrate some of these things starting off with the safe combos. Okay, combo one is going to be Abysteus and Dragoons. This is the nut combo and there's so many different paths you can go. So if you want to check out all the other different paths, you can see with Abysteus and Atlantean Dragoons, check out Abyss Hire Yu-Gi-Oh! because she demonstrates a huge amount of paths with those two cards and all the different variations on terms of like extra deck capacity as well. So that's my shout out. You should check it out for sure. I'll probably leave a link down in the description to her channel there. Anyways, the second combo we're looking into, it would be a D.Va one card combo that can set up some level of kill. It is susceptible to Nibiru. Combo number one, I think I'm gonna choose the best of each path. And the last one is going to be a test hand to see where we go. Uh, starting off with Abysteus. Special summon the Divis Teus Force Bees, send the Dragoons to the graveyard. And chain link one, chain link two. Chain link two, we're going to add the Abyss Pike to our hand. Chain link one with the Dragoons, we're going to add the Prince to our hand. So we have Nept Abyss and Abyss Pike. In the open game state, we're going to normal summon out the Abyss Pike. And for cost, we're going to discard our Nept Abyss into the graveyard. And that's going to help us fetch an Mermel Abyss, uh, sorry, Abyss Gunde. And Nept Abyss is going to activate and that's going to special summon out our Atlantean Dragoons. Summon number one, summon number two, summon number three, summon number four is NXC summon into this zone. I will just use these zones instead because uh, we want to make sure that the downwards arrow pointing from any of the extra monster zone is open for our core anemone later. So we're going to use Bahamut Shark's effect. We're going to detach the Atlantean Dragoons and that's going to special summon out the totally awesome. Summon number five. Okay, we can't get any beard now, so that's one problem out of the way, but if they have double hand trap, I I am sorry, you're just gonna have to deal with it, I guess. Uh, there's not much you can do about a double hand trap situation. And Gamma also hurts a lot. Like, now this combo isn't like, like, like undefeatable. I've lost using this combo before. Anyways, continuing on with the Atlantean Dragoons, we're going to add the copy of Moulin Glacia. And the time that I actually lost with this combo is because my opponent actually had three card to execute to kill me afterwards after uh, resolving stuff in the graveyard that I started to help him throw into there. So there's that. If they're grave centric, don't, don't focus too hard on it. Now that we have Moulin Glacia, we want five cards in the grave. We're gonna go ahead and link off all of those guys into our Coral Anemone. And you can summon to other zones, but if you want to control your zones and you want to make sure that you're leaving things open or say this zone was uh, already taken, then let's just focus on doing it on one side. If you can do it on one side, you can do it on the other side. So now that we have exactly five waters in the graveyard, so we have five waters, we are able to special summon out the Moomin Glacier. We're gonna get summon it right here. Now that's gonna be two cards out of your opponent's hand. So we're gonna take these two to simulate that. And that's in the grave right now. Hopefully it doesn't proc anything in the graveyard, but you also get deck knowledge. So you should probably path your combo in a way that it would disrupt them the most. So with two cards out of the way, and we haven't really used Neftabyss's on-field effect, and we can revive it with Coral Anemone. That will lock us into water, but that's fine. So activate Coral Anemone, special summon out this card. Activate Neftabyss's effect, throw Dragoons into the graveyard for cost, and now we're going to add a Dragoons into our hand for effect. And Dragoons' effect is going to proc once again, and now we're going to add the Megalo. Don't be tempted to proc the Megalo just yet, unless, of course, 
you have other forms of extenders which can perhaps generate a tuner onto the field right away. That's cool. I uh, I think that's really cool. Or you have another discard. If you have Abyss Teus, on the other hand, I would probably go with a, a second copy of Teus instead, just because you just want the discard outlet mainly for that. And uh, you can actually put up the Lapis Dragon quickly and keep the Abyss Gundy in your hand. But in this particular case, uh, I'm going to get rid of the Moulin Glacia and the Coral Anemone. And that's gonna open up my zones once again to for Miss Star Boy. I need the level one. I actually need the level one on the field. Remember, you have to skip your next battle phase because you put this in there, but they should have nothing to really play with once you're done with their carcass of a hand. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the Megalo effect. We're going to pay cost, sending Dragoons and Gunday to the grave and special summon out the Abyss Megalo. Chain Link 1 is always going to be the Atlantean Dragoons because it's mandatory. Chain Link 2, you can use Gun Day if you want, or you can actually cycle it the other way around. You should probably do Megalo as Chain Link 2 and Gun Day as 3 because this one can get more ashed if you want to get ashed. And if you get ashed, then you can probably get in a beard afterwards. That's why I mean double hand trap. You want to minimize the amount of chances that you can get disrupted. So we're going to go with the special summon first and the summon special summon we're going to go with is going to be Abyss Teus. And now we're gonna search a card, which is Abyss Sphere. Unless you got disrupted, probably go with uh, Mizuchi instead. That's also the other option. And our copy of Dragoons is going to fetch us the Lapis Dragon. And now that you have a zone for the Lapis Dragon, go ahead and special summon out the Lapis Dragon onto the field. All right, so at this point, use the Lapis Dragon and the Mistar Boy. Go ahead and link those guys off into Christian Hycliferbrax. Hycliferbrax is effect that's going to activate summoning up the Fishborg Launcher. All water, everything in your graveyard so far has been just a surge of water. And now we're going to synchro into another water monster, getting rid of some of your cards. You're opening up some of your zones, and we're going to synchro something into a Trisha of the Iceberry Dragon, taking away another card from their hand and their graveyard. Whatever that has the graveyard synergy, you can go ahead and banish those. And now they're down with two cards uh, in their hand. I don't know how they're going to enjoy playing Yu Gi Oh! at this point. You have a negation for one of those cards already, so let's set up another negation for him right now with the Fishborg Launcher, special summoning itself back out onto the field. And. Go ahead and synchro these two into another water monster, Adamant, Adamancipator, uh, Risen Dragite. So now we can negate a spell. If they have a spell and a monster, you have that. If they have lightning, then you can block the lightning storm and you can just play out from there. And this can also stop evenly match as well. So not too much to be afraid of at this point. And you can just set the Abyss Spear and call it a day. Now during their turn, there is some level of interaction, but I wanna note something right now is that you have Pot of Avarice, so you could potentially draw two more cards. I didn't shuffle the deck, so it wouldn't make sense for me to draw. Um, if you have Call of the Grave, you have another level of disruption. Either way, if you have Abyss in your hand, then instead of going with the Sphere, you could probably even protect your board even further uh, by instead of going into Sphere, you would summon up the Teus and equip yourself with the uh, Mizuchi instead. That's uh, the alternative, and that would also block stuff like Dark Ruler No More, because the Dark Ruler No More would be negated uh, if they did draw into it. And just look at the hand right now, it's not for that good. Now if you pass turn now, okay, so we're actually gonna go into the next turn, your opponent's turn, draw for turn, and there's their draw. Standby phase, main phase. If they play their first card, or they pass into battle phase. This is where you can go ahead and activate Christian Hacliferbrax, banishing the card. Oh, speaking of banish, of course, Fishborg Launcher is also banished because it used this effect. Uh, now you get to summon out Desert Locus or Formula Synchron, depending on your needs. If they're not really doing anything, they're just passing turn, uh, then I recommend uh, going to Formula Synchron because you can draw a card, you can actually get yourself more cards, uh, but you can go into Desert Locus. And now your opponent has to discard a card out of their hand. They get to choose, which is why I'm not a big fan of this. This actually is the reason why I died once before, but it's still pretty good considering you, once you like, if they activated the card, that means they use the card or they set a card, whatever action that they've done, uh, now they have to use another card because this is gonna go to the graveyard now. So this is a lot of cards. They're down to one card to play with while you have an Omni Negate with it. So it's not that easy to play. And you can steal their card if you if they do try to activate it pops. Then you can use Abyss Sphere. And you can summon out Gunday. 
and you can also synchro this off into Croco Dragon. Effect of Croco Dragon, draw a card, whatever it may be, and this is another disruption because you discard two cards and pop a card. So you can answer everything with this. You have no battle phase, so you have to somehow kill them without losing all of your negation. And so you have to go into battle phase, pass turn, they draw a card, and they'll have to play with the one card trying to break your board once again through everything. And you maintain the four cards in your hand. So that's the kind of combo we're looking at right now. Second combo here is the one diva combo. It's pretty silly of how much plus you can generate with this, but it is susceptible to say Ash, Nibiru, every single major hand trap can disrupt this one. So I'm not the biggest fan of this combo, but I have to say it is very effective at securing game because you finish with a three negate Appaloosa, a Toad, it's pretty ridiculous. So starting off with the D.Va, and you just summon up the D.Va and you just summon out Prince. Like this, this part here seems really natural. Uh, Prince's effect, we're gonna do the dump of a Dragoons and we're going to add a Dragoons. Now Dragoons' effect, we're immediately starting off with Lapis Dragon. All right, so add to hand, special summon up the Lapis Dragon, take the two tuners, you need a bunch of level ones right now, and you just start with the Christron Clifford Brax. With Clifford Brax onto the field, we're gonna summon out our Fish Borg. And with our fish Borg, we are going to link the two together and we're going to summon out Bajinki Ahashima. And whenever it's link summoned, you get to summon something from your hand with the same level as something in your graveyard. And we have two Atlantean Dragoons because we just do. And uh, we're gonna special summon both of these out. Immediately, it has to get XC summoned and now we get to summon out a Bahamut Shark. So with the Bahamut Shark, we can go ahead and detach the Atlantean Dragoons and we can summon our Totally Awesome. Yes, you could have gotten hit by a Nibiru by this time, but you still have four cards in your hand. Hopefully you still have some level of extension, but you have used a lot of your effects already. Atlantean Dragoons is going to activate and with Atlantean Dragoons, we add Moulin Glacia. And since we have exactly five waters in the graveyard, we're gonna go ahead and summon out Moulin Glacia. Rip two cards out of your opponent's hand. So one, two, all right, two cards out of their hand. And we still have the Omni Negate and we have Moulin Glacia, but we can still summon back our Fishboard Launcher, which is still in the graveyard. So we activate, special summon, everything's water. Get rid of the Bahamut Shark and the Christian Hacliffabrax. And this one is going to get banished this time. Let's do it right this time. And we're going to summon out an Appaloosa. So you have three negates on the Appaloosa and one on the Totally Awesome. If there's monster centric, this can be enough to kill someone. You have four cards left in your hand. And this is all from one copy of D.Va. So the path can 100% change if you have Pot of Avarice. I 100% would use Pot of Avarice. I put back basically everything except for maybe the prince just in case i have a dragoons or just in case i can uh, or leave a dragoons in the graveyard so that i can use the prince to revive it that's probably what i would do but there's like a lot of ways that you can expand on the combo if you have say a megalo a megalo would provide you with an additional card if you're able to summon out the megalo you can add the mizuchi to your hand and then this just makes it so that there is one, two, three, four, five, stopping a lot of the stuff that's happening in the back. Uh, that's why this is a very powerful combo. If you do use that, you probably lose two cards like that. So this is probably another variant of the outcome that you could probably see. And that's because of one diva. So it's pretty silly. Okay, just end off this video. Let's just do a quick test hand on, what, we got Megalo, Marksman, Megalo, Neptibus Prince and Diva. Okay, this is something that we can still play because we have these. This just makes it so that's always available. This, not that great. I don't like seeing multiples of Megalo, but since they're both secret rare copies, I was gonna bound to be opening with it anyway. Okay, so there's two ways you can approach a hand like this. If you're really afraid of hand traps, note that you will die to a hand trap on this one. You summon Diva out, you get Ash, Impermanence, Gamma, it's over. This 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 play kind of 
just ends because you have nowhere you can really go. You can go and then finish off with like a Megalodish, these two, and this will summon out like the Atlantean Marksman, you summon on a card, and that's, that's it. That you won't go anywhere further. So that is a much riskier play. If you want to do a safe play, you would probably go with the um, the uh, Prince uh, Neptibus, use his effect, and you don't really have to worry about stuff uh, activating because this is free and then you get to add another card and now you can guarantee that you'll get the Atlantean Dragoons to your hand. So it's a much safer play if you approach it that way. Because your opponent's gonna hand trap this or they're gonna stop it. The Dragoons are still going to go off and like add a card to your hand, perhaps like a Lapis, Dra Lapis Dragon and you can still perhaps do something about it. Or because this is on the field already and it got negated, and you add the lapis, you get to drop a card, and then you can put two another card onto the field, which will be the megalo. So you might actually end a board like this, which can lead to another combo. It's a full combo. You can get rid of this, you can start doing your whole thing, uh, shenanigans all over again. So these are like different ways that you can approach this hand. I'm gonna go with the more gutsy hand, say they have nothing. So in the case that they have nothing, the deck order right now does not really matter because it's going to start off with the D.Va. D.Va's effect is going to activate and I'm going to summon out not the Prince, I want the extra body. And I want a body that's the same level as my current monster. So I'm going to go with our infantry. This is going to give me an additional normal summon. So now I can just summon out the Prince and that doesn't even activate. We're going to get the Dragoons and we're going to do this. This uh, Dragoons is going to activate, and I guess we'll get the Lapis. Yeah, and then Lapis is going to activate. We're going to summon this out. This is the interesting part. We can open up our zones pretty well in, if, if you really want to try it out. So we're going to take our two level twos, since we have two monsters of same level. We're going to go ahead and summon out our, boom, our Bujinki uh, Ashihama or whatever it is. And now it's going to activate because we have Dragoons in the graveyard. We're going to summon up the Dragoons and then summon up the Dragoons and we're going to overlay the two. And we get ourselves the Bahamut Shark. And we're going to detach this to summon out. Totally awesome. So, all right, we got our Toad. That wasn't too bad. We still haven't gone to Christian Hakliffabrax. We can uh, manipulate it and we detach for this, so we have to add a card. So we'll get ourselves a Moulin Glacia. We'll take these two. And we'll just go into Christron Hacliffabrax. And with that, uh, we're gonna summon out. I guess, does it really matter? Do I wanna discard cards out of my hand? I don't think so. I don't think I'm gonna bother too much with the with whatever I've got here. Get the fish borg. Summon out Moon and Glacia, and let's go rip two cards. I want to push as far as I can with this particular hand. Is, is it even possible? I think it is. I can actually gain one additional card right now by getting rid of this. I know it's not the most ideal. And I kind of want an Appaloosa as well. Let's get the Appaloosa. Actually, hold on. I don't even need to use the Moon Glacia for this. I can get rid of the Bahamut Shark. and I don't have to lose my battle phase just yet. So now I have all this kind of clustered in this one area. Three material Appaloosa. And since I wasn't using it for Synchro, I don't really have to care about it. And I get to special summon this card back. Cause I don't think I have anything other than, yeah, I don't have anything outside of water. Detach these two, special summon this. And I get two. Oh, wow. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Sphere this time, because if I get rid of this... Uh, yeah, let's go with Sphere. Synchro these eyes off. And I now have a Dragite. So my opponent has three cards in their hand. This card is kind of a liability, not, not a big fan. I'm not locking myself out of a battle phase. I have, a, I guess I have a Bisphere. Um, spell Trap Negation. Generic negation, three body negations. So there's about five negations right here. Um, if I made any mistakes in here, uh, you guys let me know. Yeah, I think this is probably what I'll probably end with, with that particular hand. If I wanted to keep the Mizuchi, I could have actually just kept everything on the field and finish with 
this instead. And that's still pretty good because I can still stop evenly matched uh, through here, through this totally awesome. So yeah, this is actually probably the better board. I'll probably finish with this instead. Uh, yeah, so this is what I would do with that particular hand, I guess, I suppose. Anyways, that's all I got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button. If you guys want to see more stuff from MSD.TV, hit the subscribe ding notification bell. Really appreciate you guys for sticking around, watching me test hands and combos and kind of go through my thought process. As you can see, the last combo here just required me to think a little bit longer because I'm still trying to get used to what I want to do with this deck because like many decks right now in Master Rule 5, Master Rule 2020 revision, the extra deck is now open. And I think it's not just this deck, but I've mentioned it many times already. Most decks are having a bit of a tough time fitting in the correct tech. I think you have to fit your extra deck to whatever meta that you're trying to adapt to. And that's all I got. So if you guys enjoy it, of course, thumbs up, hit subscribe to the notification. I wanna see if I can get some live duels out. Maybe I'll start streaming, I'll consider it. Um, but uh, I have been also been doing some commission work. And if you guys wanna get access to some of these proxies, like uh, our big Croco Dragon here, uh, that's, a, that's a possibility. You can actually get, get yourself a copy of this stuff. It's available on the Discord. And I'll see you guys in the next one.